All right, guys. Welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary. Market Commentary. Uh, well, welcome to Pro Trader Strategies. This webinar is going to be on the short call spread. Uh, one thing I want to kind of wipe out right now is let's put that on the shelf for a little bit because I want to lead down this road, lead down our map, if you will, to finding the right strategy for the short call spread. We have an assumption, usually when we're going through our daily regimen, we find opportunities out there, whether it's from watching TV, looking at geopolitical environment, I don't know, the economic data, maybe earnings, something along those lines. Well, you come up with a directional assumption in XYZ, let's call it. Well, we need to know what is the right strategy for that given assumption. So that's why we've created this road trip to trading options or the uh, roadmap to trading options, because usually we come up with that assumption. We know where we're going to go, uh, but we don't necessarily know the right way to get there. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about here in this webinar as well. So uh, let me get a couple of things out of the way really quickly, though. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me from mainstream media. Uh, I've talked about everything from economic to geopolitical and on top of that, my market analysis. I actually started trading in college with some money I had earned and moved up to Chicago, sold all my stocks, bought my badge, and have traded everything in that time from stocks, financial futures, commodity futures, currencies, and options on all these products in just about all market conditions. Uh, so hopefully you guys can learn from that 25 years of experience where I've literally been put in a position where... I didn't necessarily want it. That was one of the things as a as a market maker was you didn't always get to choose the specific environment that you were offsetting uh, or putting on a trade. So I've learned from those types of um, uphill battles or headwinds as to when, where, and why it is the right time to implement a certain option strategy. So I'm going to share those things with you, those insights. All right, so you can follow me on Twitter at Wolfman's Blog, or our parent company is at ProTraderStrat. Facebook, ProTraderStrategies.com. We're throwing out all kinds of content out there on a daily basis that you guys can check out. Uh, really, just to kind of test the water, you know, that you don't have to dive in head first. You can test it and see uh, see what you're liking there. Uh, also, give me a thumbs up on those uh, videos or, you know, let me know what you guys think. All right. So, like I said, this is on the short call spread, but I want you guys to put that on the shelf for a moment. Uh, let's talk about the roadmap key, right? Anytime we're going on a road trip, we need to look at the map and know what the key is. We need to know if this is 10 miles or 100 miles, right? Well, that's similar to what this is. We know what these different uh, symbols are or these different Greeks are kind of, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and easier ways for some of you newer option traders on how to remember these, uh, because it's super important to understand the Greeks. And I know a lot of people right now are kind of seeing uh, fuzzy or uh, getting dizzy, thinking, oh my God, we're not talking about options and uh, the Greeks again. But yes, we are gonna be talking about the Greeks really quickly, hopefully. Well, Delta is really telling us how much those premiums correlated to the specific strike price are going to fluctuate given a movement in the underlying, right? So let's just say it's XYZ. If XYZ moves a dollar in either direction, how do those premiums uh, adjust as well? Well, Delta tells us specifically that. So, and it's based on a dollar move. So when we're looking at uh, Delta, we know it is kind of assuming a $1 move. So on the first dollar move and everything with these Greeks is, you know, progressive in a sense where it's moving higher or moving forward in a, uh, in a way. So that's the assumption. Now, if it goes backwards, you know, then we need to take that into account. Backwards connotates a negative, right? So we're going to play all that out. But Delta is the effect of the option premium in relation to the underlying. So when we're talking about this, I'm going to be talking about uh, specifically like a $1 move there. So let's pull up the platform real quick. Pull this over so you guys can see it relatively easy. Blow it up. Hopefully that'll make it bigger for you guys to be able to see. So uh, TLT, let's pick something I don't have something going on in just to keep it clean. All right, so this is the option montage. And 
when we're looking at the option montage, we got the, the Greeks up here at the top. We've got Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, all right? So when we're looking at all of those, we need to know what Delta is telling us. So if we look over here at Delta, it's 50 or 50 cents, all right? So if we're talking about X, Y, Z here in this regard, we're gonna be talking about how this Delta affects, let's just say this first, uh, out of the money call. So right now it's $7.62. Well, on this first dollar move, when we go to $292.05, that's a $1 move higher, right? Now, what is gonna happen is this 50 cents goes into those premiums. So we would be looking at $8.12 on the bid. The offer would, be, would then be $8 and, uh, <laughs> brain, brain cramp. Uh, $8.18, simple. Um, all right, so that first dollar move, Delta goes into it. If we look over here on the put side, we can see that that Delta is negative on the put side. Um, how do I get audio? Uh, let me try and respond to him real quick. And for everybody who is not Roger at this point in time, uh, I'm just going to send it to all. Uh, if you ever lose audio or something like that, log off, you guys, and log back on. Usually that will fix the issue. All right, so uh, on the other side, on the put side, it's negative because it's assuming a dollar move higher. So as those puts get further away from the, at the money, they're going to lose value. So we would be losing... 48 cents, or let's just go with this one since it's the same strike, losing 50 cents out of these. So the bid then would, on this side, would now be $7.75 on a dollar move higher. And the 834s would also be uh, $7.80, uh, $7.80, 4 cents, right? So they would decrease by that corresponding uh, delta, all right? So that is on a positive move. If we had a negative move, if it went down by a dollar, what then happens? Well, if it went down by a dollar, that's a negative commutation, it's moving back. So a negative plus a positive, so we have a negative plus a positive delta, that would then make that a negative delta, all right? Negative 50 delta, all right? So then on a negative dollar move, these would then decrease by that corresponding 50 cents. And then if these were a negative dollar move, right? A negative plus a negative equals a positive. So those corresponding puts would then increase by that uh, amount. Pretty simple so far, right? Any questions so far? All right, no, I don't see anything. I'm just trying to see if Roger saw my uh, note there. All right, so gamma. Easiest thing to remember with gamma is gamma is the rate of change to delta. Well, that's not the easiest thing. Just remember, gamma goes with delta. All right, goes uh, goes with delta. All right. Well, it basically adds into delta. We talked about delta being the first dollar. Well, this is dollar number two where gamma comes into consideration, all right? So that second dollar move, gamma starts going into the delta. So for that uh, equivalent amount. Oop, I don't want that. I want the uh, platform here. All right, so in this regard, we're gonna be looking at gamma here. All right, it's two cents. So we talked about, now we're talking about uh, 193.05. All right, so that first dollar move higher, it increased by 50 cents. Now the second dollar on dollar number two, number two, all right, or sorry, number two dollar, this two cents goes in there. So the second dollar move, those same premiums would then increase by 52 cents, all right? So we were looking at it being at a, a 50 cent increase on these calls over here. So we were looking at $7.80 uh, plus the 50 cents. So we were looking at $8.30. They've obviously changed $8.30 now, 
right? That was on dollar number one. That was on the first dollar. Now the 52 cents goes into Delta. So then on that second dollar move, the bid would, been, uh, would be then $8.82, okay? Just to speed that up a little bit. Now on a second dollar move higher, well, a negative delta plus a positive gamma means that that gamma is going to be a little bit less. So that second dollar move, our premiums would only decrease by 46 cents, right? First dollar move, they decreased by 48 cents. Second dollar move, they only, gamma goes with delta, but it's a negative delta plus a positive gamma. So it's a little bit less, 46 cents would then come out of that second dollar. Vice versa, a negative move, right? A negative plus a positive delta means that that delta on the call side would be negative. A negative plus a positive delta makes that a, a negative delta plus a positive gamma would make that 48 cents on the second dollar move down. On the flip side, we've got a negative $2 plus the negative delta makes that a positive delta. So we start moving down, those deltas start increasing on that second dollar move, okay? So gamma, gamma goes with delta. And it's the second dollar. So it's delta, first dollar, you gotta play into, affect that gamma on the second dollar. And this is when you're kind of speculating out, right? Now, delta um, and gamma go together. Just know that gamma starts increasing the closer to expiration. That's something to keep in mind. That, that number further out in time is a little bit less than right before expiration, let's say, that gamma really starts getting jacked up, all right? And, and a lot of that has to do with those ones that are at the money could easily then go, uh, you know, Delta also tells us probabilities uh, ultimately. So we can kind of figure the probabilities on different dollar increment moves uh, and gamma starts ramping up closer to expiration. All right, theta. Theta is our thief, all right? It's the thief in the night that comes and steals our premiums. It's the impact of time on premium. Well, gamma, we know, it, or sorry, uh, theta, we know is a thief. The thief is going to be much more aggressive, closer to expiration. He knows he doesn't have a whole lot of time left to really eat away a premium. So we can look at the weeklies on this one and see that gamma, or sorry, gamma actually increases. That's what I was talking about before. Uh, but now we're looking at theta. You know, one day looking at tomorrow's expiration, you can see there's a lot of theta that's going to come out of these uh, August weeklies tomorrow. So tomorrow we wake up, 49 cents is coming out of this bid and the offer on this. You can see that uh, theta is always negative because you can't go back in time, okay? So theta is always a negative. You can't really uh, make theta a positive because it's always going to erode. You can take advantage of that, right? Like I could sell some of these calls or puts and take advantage of that rapid theta decay because he's really aggressive right at the uh, close to expiration. But the further out in time, he's a little less aggressive, all right? So just trying to get those uh, cogs turning in your brain, right? To start thinking when you wanna take advantage of selling and when you wanna take advantage of buying, right? You wanna take advantage of theta because uh, when you're selling option premium, because you want it, you want to sell high and buy low if nothing else changes. So you're trying to increase your probabilities of success that way. So you can see here though that theta is always a negative. The thief in the night is always going to steal money from you. Sometimes you want him to, and sometimes you don't. So you can see further out the timeline, this theta component is much less, but it is always negative on both sides. So tomorrow we would expect that uh, those same at the money calls and puts that we were looking at would decrease by the corresponding theta tomorrow. We could wake up, nothing else has changed. The underlying is still trading right here at $291.05 tomorrow morning. We should expect to see these premiums decrease by that 18 cents. That's with all else being equal. Volatility doesn't change. Uh, Delta doesn't change all of that stuff, okay? So theta is that thief in the night that is gonna come and steal our premium. 
And then Vega, Vega is the mark uh, is the measure of volatility. So, and this is a positive one percent increase. It's an expected positive increase in that volatility coefficient. Now, where is the volatility? It's over here. So we look over here on the right side, at least on my platform, and we're looking at Vega here. We're talking about this number, all right? And it is implied volatility. It is a percent. I don't want to confuse anybody with implied volatility percent because that's what I use. But implied volatility for this is Vega. And when this increases by one percentage point, we're talking now at uh, $32.82, uh, or 32.80.82%, uh, so one percentage point increase, we're talking about this volatility Vega coefficient adding into the premiums, okay? So that's just a one percentage point move. That means this underlying hasn't changed uh, a penny, okay? Then we get that Vega going into those premiums. And you can see that the further out of the money you get, it's a little bit less. The ones that are going to have that biggest volatility coefficients are the ones that are very close to the at the monies, all right? Uh, we don't, we're not talking about the 16 delta or anything like that. We're talking about the ones that are very close to at the money. Those are the ones that are going to have the highest volatility coefficient. Now, if we go and look volatility, we know affects further duration options a little bit more than the near duration options, right? So if you want to take advantage of volatility expanding, the idea is to kind of go out there along the curve, right? And if you want to take advantage of volatility expanding, you want low volatility, right? Uh, we'll talk about how you determine whether or not this 3182 or this 3710 is high or low for the Qs. We need to determine that. It's uh, volatility is not equal along or across all underlines. 31 for the Qs is completely different than 31 for Microsoft or Tesla or some of the other high flyer techs. Okay. So we have to isolate where volatility is right now for this underlying implied volatility is right now and kind of put it in relation to where it's been in the past because what happens is we see a pretty good definitive line in the sand where volatility has a tendency to remain within these uh, boundaries for a specific underlying. No, it doesn't mean that it can't break out above that for a short period of time, but the idea is that it's going to want to come back to the mean, all right? And that's what we're looking for is taking advantage of it when it expands by selling options, right? And take advantage of it when it's expanding uh, by buying options. You want to buy low volatility, sell high volatility. All right. So where are we going? That's the first thing we try to determine, right? We've got this specific uh, roadmap. More people spend time on uh, planning out a road trip or a, tr a vacation than they do planning their uh, investments. That's why we need to spend a little bit more time on planning investments. That's where we came up with the roadmap. All right, so what we're doing is we're just kind of like, you know, when you're going on a road trip, you just you just throw a dart at it and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to go. Sorry. I'm going to go like right. Oh, I got, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to put my eraser. I got a pen here. Believe it or not, that's the eraser. That's the pen. Um, and I keep hitting the eraser, which is making it mouse. You know, you just throw a dot and say, I'm going right there. Well, that might be in, just on the side of the road somewhere, right? That's probably not a very good destination or uh, plot, but let's just say, you know, we're going to uh, hit somewhere up. We're going up here. You know, we're this is me, and we're going to go to um, Baba. Baba land, all right? Now, so we've kind of determined we are at least heading north, right? We're gonna head north. How are we gonna get there? Well, we don't necessarily know that, but one of the things we do know is we have then a bullish, bullish assumption if we're heading north to Baba. We believe Baba is, or, sorry, let me back up. I don't know why I've started getting into Baba being bullish. Uh, 
Let me erase all of this. I'm not bullish in Baba. I am bearish in Baba. So let's just say this is me then. We'll just switch it. This is me and this is Baba. So we are heading south somehow, all right? So we do not have a bullish assumption. We have a bearish assumption, right? We, we believe it's bearish, all right? Maybe even slightly neutral. We just don't think it's going to continue to move high. Why is kind of like, you know, here, here's my assumption, how I come up with my assumption in Baba, right? As um, I've, I've seen all these uh, headwinds that the U.S. is kind of putting on Chinese company, uh, Chinese companies dealing in the U.S. Is Baba the next shoe to drop? You know, we've already heard about TikTok and all of that stuff. That was big news today. Um, well, is Baba uh, on, you know, on the chopping list as well? Uh, a lot of uh, U.S. manufacturers would hope not because that's probably really streamlined their process of finding things. But that is still going to be a headwind moving forward. So I'm bearish in Baba. So I've come up with that assumption where, you know, this is me and we've got Baba down here. All right. So the next thing I need to really know is, is, you know, I've got that bearish assumption. I know my directional move here is, is downward. All right. So we're heading south. But now I kind of need to start deciding what direction do I believe I want to go? You know, do I, I probably don't want to go that way, right? I don't want to go north to go south. Like I kind of led you guys to believe in the beginning. No, I don't want to do that. I want to head south somehow. Uh, whether we're going to go through uh, Des Moines or head south and uh, see all the stops. I forgot to pull out. I got a really funny. Uh, I like to hit all the tourist stops, to be honest. Um, and I, I have a really funny tourist stop map of the United States. So now we have to determine, you know, we're not throwing darts at the board to find our destination, right? We've kind of picked a stock. And Baba, I have a bearish market assumption on it. Now, <clears throat> I have to determine whether or not Baba is a good destination. What I mean by that is, is there a lot of open interest in Baba? Is there a lot of things to do down there uh, where I want to go, right? Well, I need to figure that out by looking at the option montage. So if you guys ever hear me talking about option montage, it's this page. And what I'm looking at is, in a sense, volume and open interest, all right? So for any stock that's greater than $100, we move the decimal place three ticks to the left. and we. So in this case, it would be 29 30 cents. So we look at the bid offer on the options that are closest to expiration. Uh, right now, it's about 22 days. Uh, closest to expiration being the ones that are closest to 35 days to expiration, really. But 22 days is about as close as we're going to get. It's the monthlies that are closer to expiration. Um, it's where the most time and volume is. So you can see that this is fitting that rule quite nicely. Less than 30 cents. I moved the decimal three ticks to the left, 29 cents. I need to look at the bid offer over here and see that it is less than 29 cents. Now, um, you know, on a stock that is less than a hundred dollars, I'll just throw a billy billy, even though I have a position in there. Any stock that's less than a hundred dollars, it's less than or equal to 10 cents wide to the bid offer during open market operations. You can see that this fits that rule pretty well uh, along those lines. eBay, uh, less than 10 cents wide to the bid offer. You can see that fits those pretty good. And this is during open market operations. Uh, after the market closes, we see those uh, markets get really wide. I'm sure we will see that happen over here in BABA. Uh, in BABA, we'll see, um, that they've gotten really wide. You can see these are 70 cents wide. And my rule here would be move the decimal three takes left 28 cents. So knowing that that was probably going to be the case, I did a screenshot right before the close of Baba for you. And um, here's what we're talking about, right? We've moved the decimal three ticks left. We're looking at 28 cents, all right? So I wanna look down here at these options that are closest to expiration. You can see 
that it fits the rule there. Not quite there, but there it's a little bit wider. Uh, there it's pretty close. So what happens when it doesn't fit that rule, right? Well, what I would say here is that um, when we're talking about this destination and whether or not it is a good destination, if it is a stock, I don't know where I'm going to write this. Uh, it's a good destination, right? What we need to do is um, if it's if X Y Z is greater than greater than a hundred dollars, then I said we move the decimal three ticks to the left, right, um, to get that. So if it's less than or equal to that, you know, so if it's, let's just say, for example, it's a $287 stock, we move it three ticks to the left, less than or equal to 87 cents to that bid offer, that would be um, a basic green light. Uh, let me find that, this thing. So when we're looking at this, uh, since we're doing the road trip theme, let's look at it like this. Uh, that would then be a green light, all right? So if we are looking at something that is X, Y, Z, and it is less than a $100 stock, right? X, Y, Z is less than a $100 stock, then it's uh, less than or equal to 10 cents wide, all right? That is a green light, all right? So it fits the rule, less than or equal to 10 cents. That's the rule or the guideline, however you want to look at it, all right? Now, if it is two times the rule, two times the rule, then we get a yellow light, all right? If it's, if across the board, it's basically three times the rule, then uh, that's a red light, okay? So during open market operations, I would have to say that uh, I'm kind of, looking at right in between here uh, for these. So kind of looking at a yellow Baba. Baba is kind of a yellow light in regards to this on the pricing. Now you can always double check yourself and I, you know, you can even just look at the option montage and go back and forth to see whether or not, whether or not there is a lot of volume and open interest by doing this. Well, that's confirmation that there is a lot of volume and a lot of open interest in BABA uh, on any given day, especially even in the options that we're looking at. So, you know, uh, you can double check yourself that way. I just use this rule during open market operations. Uh, I'm just kind of looking at, okay, well, it's got to be, I moved by decimal place, it's got to be 28 cents for it to be a green light. And we obviously are going to uh, look at that during open market operations for that rule. And this is what those option montages looked like before that uh, closed because everybody's orders get canceled. When my, I hear the ding and the bell, I can hear all my orders getting canceled. It, you know, clicks those off, gives me a little notification. Those orders have been canceled. That's, they're not being represented on this market anymore outside of uh, the close. So, you know, they'll get a little bit wider. So make sure when you're, reviewing that rule or that guideline that you're following that specific uh, setup there. All right, so destination, I'm gonna say in BABA, we basically are looking at that yellow light there, right? So we are looking at going to BABA, but we know we need to proceed with caution. Uh, we get too many yellow lights and a red light maybe even, uh, then we're going to have to really consider not not doing options on BABA or a strategy specific option strategy in BABA, okay, uh, moving forward. All right. So the next thing we need to do is look at the environment. Like what is the environment in and around going to BABA? We're going on a road trip. We need to know what what it's like to get there, you know? Uh, when it's sunny and we're on a road trip, there's, there's not a care in the world. We have low volatility. We're not feeling stress. We just know that it's gonna be clear sailing. Well, when it's clear sailing, 
you know, you can take your time to go and visit those roadside attractions along the way. Go see the Cadillac Ranch, the biggest ball of yarn, the, the Corn Palace, wherever you're going. Uh, there's a roadside attraction for you. <laughs> um, but we can take our time when there's low volatility. But when it's raining or there's sleet or there's inclement weather, we know that our, our volatility or our stress level starts increasing. We want to beeline it there. We want shorter duration in order to get there, right, to our destination. So we might try and pick the, the uh, path of least resistance or as the crow flies, however you want to look at it. We want to try and have this time on the road to get to that destination to be very limited, right? So uh, think about a high volatility. When you're getting into high volatility, we talked about those premiums for every dollar or for every one percentage point increase in the premium or in the volatility coefficient, those premiums start increasing. Well, if we are at high volatility for that underlying, we know that we are selling or those premiums are the most expensive they've been, right? Can we agree with that? Like if volatility for X, Y, Z is at the highest levels we've seen, we know those premiums therefore are at the highest levels we've seen, right? And when volatility is super low for X, Y, Z, we know that those premiums are super cheap, right? So if they're cheap, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna sell them when they're cheap? No, you probably want to buy them when they're cheap and sell them when they're expensive. And we talked about that. Well, if you're selling them when they're expensive, what do you want to do? You want to take advantage of getting there quickly, which means a shorter duration, right? We want to take advantage of theta coming in there and volatility contracting. Because when we're selling high volatility, we expect it to go back to the mean, but we also want to have theta on our side. Uh, so you're going to be getting closer to expiration when we're putting all of this together. Now, how do we determine whether or not BABA or XYZ has uh, where it's implied volatility, where its volatility is for itself? We take the current IV, current IV, all right, implied volatility, and uh, we subtract that by the low implied volatility, and we take that sum and divide it by the high IV minus the low IV, all right? So what does, this, what does this equation do? It really tells us where current IV is in relation to the high and the low, okay? It's basically saying current IV is right here, you know, the range is here, you know, is that does the current IV land down here or does it land up here, okay? If it lands way up here near the high, then, then that's where we're gonna be leaning towards selling premium. And obviously if it's way down here close to the low, that's where we're gonna be leaning towards buying premium. You know, let's just take a look at BABA real quick uh, on the charts. And you'll see that on the charts here, I throw it out in a, uh, a chart within my charts, right? Implied volatility. Uh, so it's telling me where implied volatility is now in relation to where it's been in the past. So you can see when volatility is incredibly low, or even if you think that this is the new normal up here, you know, you can see when volatility gets really low, it starts to want to expand. But I can also see that at least even in the more recent times, when it starts getting up at these levels in the 52, 53 area, it wants to slow down or start reverting back to the mean here, right? So it doesn't mean that it can't continue higher up into, you know, up to 60, but we can see that when it starts expanding up in these areas that it wants to come back, back down to around this area. You know, if I get that just happening, you know, 10 percentage points, right? If it goes to 43 from 53 and nothing else ha happens, the underlying stays at this current price level, but I get a premium or uh, sorry, a volatility drop of 10 percentage points, right? Well, you can say if every dollar move or every percentage point move, the Vega affects the premium, right? Well, if this started going down by one percentage point, I would lose 28 cents out of these premiums. 
okay? If it just went down by one percentage point, I'd lose 28 cents. What if it goes down by that 10 percentage point? That's $2.80, even if nothing else happens here. I'm not even talking about the big theta component that we're trying to take advantage of as well, right? I, you know, if it opened up tomorrow, 10 percentage points lower, which is probably not likely, but just to give you guys, a, you know, to wrap your heads around this, I would lose, if it dropped by 10 percentage points, I would lose $2.80 plus the one day, which is 34 cents. So I'd lose over $3 in premium in these, if I got that volatility drop and one day went by, right? So that's a pretty massive drop in the premiums just by setting yourself up. You know, one of the few things we can do when we're trading options or putting on a trade in, uh, in anything, really, is to set yourself up for success at the onset. You know, once you put that trade on, you're kind of beholden to the rest of the markets, right? All the forces that are going on. Well, the beauty in options is, you know, we have all these other little nuances going on that we can take advantage of. We just need to know when, where, and why it is the right time. All right. So we want to take advantage of premiums when they are really expensive. All right. We want to take advantage of that by selling those and obviously take advantage of cheap premiums. And all you have to worry about is that theta component. Well, how do you limit that theta component? When you're buying, you go further out in time. All right. Kind of, kind of beating that dead horse at this point, aren't I? <laughs> all right. So. Now, why does volatility matter? I think I probably already said this a hundred times, right? Volatility affects the options premiums. Uh, when volatility is high, we sell premium. And like I said, we're looking at IV percent, and that is that you know current IV minus the low IV uh, divided by the high IV, right? Minus the low IV. That's that's the equation I'm talking about. Equals IV percent, right? So when IV percent in this regard is greater than, when it's greater than 50% uh, for a stock, when a stock is greater than 50%, any stock, individual stock is greater than 50%, that's when we are going to look to sell, right? Or if it's an ETF, it's greater than 30%. Right, and these are people with uh, relatively strong um, risk parameters. Uh, and if it's less than 50% for a stock, then we wanna buy. And if it's less than 30% for an ETF, we want to buy, All right? Now, if you're used, if you're newer to options trading, you're uh, one. Of, this is your first rodeo, whatever. Uh, then you, I don't have a problem with you saying, okay, if it's greater than seventy-five percent, all right. For an ETF, it's greater than fifty percent, all right. And uh, if it's a stock, it's less than um, twenty-five percent, you know. And for an ETF, it's less than like fifteen percent or something like that. And if you're asking yourself why. Uh, why is an ETF have a lower parameter than uh, the broader market, like the uh, regular stocks? And an ETF, I mean, even an indice, a future. Uh, what I'm talking about is that these are baskets of goods or an index is a basket of a bunch of different underlyings and all of their volatilities meld each other out. So it has a tendency to spike a little bit, but it also has, if it spikes, it reverts back very quickly. So it's it's usually pretty difficult to see the ETF really spike high very quickly. Um, but I don't have a problem, you guys, uh, adjusting those a little bit to the corresponding um, ones that I have listed there. So that's kind of our guideline for this. If volatility is high, that's when we wanna sell the premium. If volatility is low, that's when we want to buy premium. Now, volatility is probably the most important aspect of determining whether or not we are selling option strategies or buying option strategies. The next thing we're going to be also looking at would be then theta and how that's going to really affect our premiums. 
All right, so uh, we want to look at a specific example for BABA. We want to know where this 52 and a half right there, that's where implied volatility, current implied volatility is. So remember, we have, we have our equation that we're going to be looking at. We need to know where this high mark is. We need to know where the low mark is right there. You know, and I have no problem if you discount where uh, it was previously. Like if you want to say, I, I take out all of this, we can we can look at that number as well. I'll have to ballpark it a little bit. But um, we know the high is 73, the low is 23, and currently it is 52 and a half. So let's just call it uh, 53. Um, so I need to take the current, which is 53. Just I'm doing this from simple math. Bottom is 23, right? So this is 23 down here. 23, this is 73. If you drew a line straight across. All right, so we take that sum divided by 73 minus 23. And basically we get 30 divided by 50. And 30 divided by 50 equals 60 percentile. All right, so this specific underlying, whether it's X, Y, Z or whatever, is in the 60 percentile. Now, if I told you IV percent to 60 percent, what's the first thing that's starting to go on in your guys' heads right now? Cogs are turning. We got a 60 IV percent in BABA. Right, exactly. We want to sell premium. All right, so I want to take advantage of this high premium because I think that volatility is going to start coming out of this underlying all right i want to take advantage of theta as well so i want to get uh the theta component to uh work in my favor i want you change so basically 60 iv percent means we have high volatility right it is uh greater than a 50 percent right so we have high volatility for this underlying. Oh, I kind of let the cat out of the bag. What duration do we want? We want to streamline our process. We want to get there fast, right? We have we have inclement uh, things going on in the road. We want to speed up the process getting there. So when we're buying options, we want to the trader wants to limit theta decay. And when we're selling options, when you sell options. We want to exploit it. We want to exploit it. Exploit theta decay. So we, here's a good representation I kind of showed you on that uh, on the option montage when we pulled that up. You know, theta that thief doesn't really do a whole lot way out here. He's kind of nickel and diamond you, but inside of here, uh, he's starting to get aggressive. That's why. I, Always talking about that 35 days to expiration. That's where people start looking at the option montage. And you can see that the at the money, and so we're going to be going slightly out of the money, but still pretty good representation as to how uh, theta is more aggressive towards the end here. And yes, really aggressive down here. I like to stay away from all of this because gamma really starts ramping up inside of that seven days. And I, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, on these type of trades. I'd like to get in uh, somewhere out here and then take advantage of that drop in theta. Now, something also, something also it feels like we see happening and it's not necessarily because theta really does continue to come in and eat away at your premiums. But when we get volatility coming into the market, what did I talk about volatility? It increases those premiums. So it feels like this curve when volatility starts coming into the market, starts kind of moving higher as volatility increases, so do the premiums. So then when that volatility comes out, like I showed in that chart, like I expect volatility to come out of BABA, it really starts catch, catching up to this curve, okay? Uh, and it's like a balloon. Volatility blows up that balloon, and when you let out the air, it just, it snaps, all right? So it snaps back. So, you know, we would be selling premium up here. We would see those premiums really come out of what we're doing with the underlying. So we've talked about this a little bit. We've got high volatility. I know I've got a bearish assumption in this underlying. 
I've got high volatility. I want to sell premiums when I have that really high volatility and I expect it to come down. You know, that's also part of that whole high volatility mantra is that you expect it to come down. Uh, so I do expect volatility to come out of BABA uh, and uh, I want to take advantage of theta decay. So one thing I don't want though is Mark, a rising tide lifts all ships, right? We've seen markets be irrational longer than we can stay solvent. So I'm a little worried about Baba like blasting off to the upside. Maybe uh, they, um, you know, are exempt from all of this stuff or we hear something like that. Or maybe there's a U.S. company that decides they want to buy Baba. Um, like, I, I don't know, something as ridiculous as Walmart wanting to buy TikTok. Uh, I, I see Walmart. I see the reasoning why Walmart wants to buy TikTok. Don't get me wrong, but um, it just seems like a, a big pivot. But, you know, so I want to limit my risk. Also, remember, I drew that line when, you know, what happens if I have to take that upper road and I have to let this market go against me? Well, I want to limit my risk as well. I have a bearish assumption. I have high volatility. It means I'm looking to sell premium, which is leading me to selling calls, right? If I sell a call and I get that negative move, those premiums will decrease due to the delta on the negative move. I take advantage of theta decay. I want to get closer to expiration, right? Take advantage of that theta decay. Volatility is really high, so I'm, I'm selling premium as well. I want to take advantage of that volatility coefficient. But one of the things that is the shining determination to really... I know I'm looking to sell calls somehow, but I'm worried about upside. So if I'm worried about that upside, I want to do the call spread, short call spread, right? I want to limit my risk in case I wake up tomorrow and this market is through the roof. I want to have some limited risk on this trade. So if you're worried about the limited risk, we want to lean towards the call spread as opposed to a negative, a naked call, right? Um, also, if you're working in a uh, IRA or uh, outside the United States, you might have to use a short call spread uh, in lieu of naked shorts anyway. So now we're looking at the short call spread. So what spots do we visit? Well, if we are making this road trip, we need to know where we're going to take our pit stops. We're uh, grabbing a hotel and all of those things. Well, same thing with an option strategy. We need to know our spots that we're going to hit along the way. So we're going to start out by selling a 36 delta call, all right? Now, you're not always going to have a 36 delta, you guys. I'm not completely out of my mind. That's not going to be a red light, green light, yellow light thing here. But what we are looking at here is starting out with that 36 delta call uh, option. And then we are going to sell a further out of the money call. So, you know, we're selling a call right here. And then out of the money on the option montage is going to be a little bit uh, further away there. So in this regard, uh, what I want us to really take away from this is we need to know how much um, how much we're going to collect for the width of the spreads here. So if we go back to my idea of the uh, strategy here, Basically, what we're going to look at is 25, we're going to look to collect 25 to 33% the width of the spread. All right. So whatever the difference is here, we want to collect 25 to 33% the width of that spread. Basically, you know, if it's, above uh, 33%, that's obviously a go, all right? Uh, but basically, if we go below 25%, the width of the spread, you know, that starts becoming a yellow light for me. I, You know, if you want to get further away from where the underlying is trading, maybe you're worried about a specific move, um, you know, just know that your risk versus reward is much less. You know, you want to have some good reward for the risk you're taking. And I have a few, I feel like, you know, you start getting less than 25% of the width of the spread, you're, you're risking more 
than you're willing to make uh, uh, in relation to your probabilities and everything else. So usually when you start out with this 36 delta and, um, and you create that spread, you're gonna have about 33% of the width of the spread. Now, how do you determine the width of the spread? Usually um, the width of the spread is gonna be, uh, let's say if it's less than $50, if X, Y, Z, if X, Y, Z is less than $50, then you're basically gonna be looking at, uh, you know, one to three dollars. Uh, I'll say that I'll just make this the width width column, All right? And if it's uh, basically you know around a hundred dollar stock, let's just say give or take somewhere around that, it's going to be about uh, you're going to be start you're going to be kind of looking at a five dollar wide spread. You know, if it's greater than a hundred dollars, you know, you're going to be looking at uh, uh, about ten dollars, and I used to kind of say, you know, a ballpark on this would be, you know, basically um, look at it like ten percent of what that underlying is trading. That doesn't really always fall through. It works uh, works a little bit better um, with the lower price stocks, but um, you know, like an Amazon or something like that, you're not looking at two hundred dollar wides necessarily. But this is a pretty good idea, you know. Um, you know, if it's greater than a two hundred dollar stock, you're going to be looking at somewhere between ten and twenty uh, twenty dollars ish, All right? Twenty dollars wide. Not always the case, and as a matter of fact, that's not the case for today's example either. So those are just kind of ideas to get you started. The ultimate thing is to figure out what your width of your spread is versus how much you're able to collect there. Right. And the reason why I want to use that 36 delta uh, call is basically it lines us up right here with a half a standard deviation move. That's what this is telling us on the uh, curve here is we want to sell that 36 delta because basically if you add up all of these probabilities, that ends up being very close to 36%. And that means that uh, all of this is about an 84% probability. Well, if it goes, if, you know, we start out right here, that means it can go a little bit higher, right? Uh, and I'm still going to be a high probability of success. So uh, if it trades neutral, maybe even slightly higher, um, then I can still win with this strategy. I've got a high, 64%, thank you. 64% chance of this all happening here, all right? Because this is about a 36% probability for starting out with that 36 delta. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about last week, remember I was trying to draw those skews? Negative skews means, you know, like we're looking at this as being the put side, this being the call side. That means the puts are that are equal distance from the calls uh, have more premium in them. So it kind of gets that little bit of a skew to it. So that, I just threw that up there so you guys would be able to see and on this side, you know, uh, positive skew, the call side have a longer tail to them than the put side there. So uh, they, they have a little bit more premium jacked into them. All right, so with the example, and this is why I kind of took a screenshot before the market closed because I wanted to show you guys this example and that's why, um, we would be selling as close to that 36 delta. Well, I didn't have a 36 delta, so sometimes you're gonna have to go a little bit closer than that, right? So I sold the 37 delta, which ended up being the 300 strike, buying the uh, the 310s, $10 wide. I'm pretty easy on the math, right? My credit is $2.87. Well, that is 28 almost 29% the width of the spread. So in my eyes, this is a green light so far, right? We can see we moved the decimal three ticks to the left. Um, we can see that, you know, 28 cents, it fits the rule, uh, you know, in some regards. So I would say that, you know, it's pretty much a yellow light on the pricing for BABA. My volatility, my implied volatility, we determined this uh, 53, 
is a 60 IV percent. So that makes that a green light. Um, you know, so I'm checking off the boxes there. We've got high implied volatility, 22 days. That's as close to 35 days to expiration as I can get. You know, I don't want to go further out the curve. Uh, I want to take advantage of that um, theta happening. So I'm I'm leaning towards these September contracts here. So when we're checking off the things, I've got a bearish assumption. I'm bearish, right? So I've got that figured out. I've checked off the destination because that's that, um, you know, less than or equal to 10 cents deal from the bid to the offer, the bid ask. All right, or you move the decimal three ticks to the left, right, it's the bid ask. The environment, right now we're looking at it's greater than IV percent of 50, IV uh, percent is greater than 50, right? So that checks that off because we got a 60 IV, IV percent. So that checks that off. The duration, uh, I want, you know, I want it to be as close to 35 days to expiration. Well, we're looking at 22 days to the expiration. And my strikes, I'm looking at um, the 36 delta, which is equivalent to the 300 strike. All right, so I write all this stuff down, you guys. When I'm going through all of this stuff, I kind of go through these steps. You know, what's my what's my assumption? Is does it fit this rule? Do I check off all of these check marks as we go down? Finally, coming up with the strikes that I'm going to use, right? Um, because I want to make sure that uh, I I follow the guidelines here. Also, I hold myself accountable to all of this stuff, and I have the data to go back and look and see what worked and what may not have worked. I won't change my uh, strategy as as things start changing in the markets, right? If you get that gut feeling like you're wrong, pull the ripcord on it. But otherwise, I like to play out the probabilities on these. All right, so your max profit is a net premium. Anytime you receive a credit, that's what you get. I mean, you get that as your max profit. So in this case, I'm looking at that 287. That's my max profit that I could possibly get. Now, am I always going to hold on to all of that and try and get the max profit? No, but I think you need to know what your risks are. All right. Now, in our case, we were looking at the width of the spread minus that premium received is our max loss because we have defined risk strategy. Well, I was looking at $10 wide, right? $10 minus 287, $2, minus $2.87. dollars makes this, uh, my max loss is $7.13. Right, so I know my max loss. I know my uh, max reward on this. I usually like to try and get as close to 33% as I can uh, on this, but I didn't want to necessarily go much closer to where the underlying is trading right now in order to achieve that. Um, plus, I thought you know 300 level. That's a pretty good uh, psychological resistance area as well for Alibaba. Uh, on the upside, it would be higher than the all-time high right now. Um, our break-even is that short call strike, which is that $300, right? We are looking at the 300 strike. It's that 300 strike uh, plus that $2.87. And this is at expiration, $2.87. So my break-even is equal to th when it's trading 302.87. The eights are not working out very good. All right, so that's where my break even is. And all of these things are at expiration, right? I'm not always looking to do it at expiration. I'm looking to do this in BABA. I'm taking, I'm going to BABA, right? And um, on a winner, I'm going to look to get out a 50% of max profit. Uh, profit, all right? Which is basically going to be equal to when the underlying or when this is trading at 140, uh, 145, let's just call it. Uh, all right. So on a winner, when my premiums have gone 
from 287 two dollars and 87 cents down to the winner which is here that's where i'm getting out that's where i'm going to look to get out on a winning trade it doesn't matter if it's tomorrow it doesn't matter if it's two weeks from now i'm going to look to exit this strategy when it's trading somewhere around two dollars or from uh two dollars and 87 cents and has gone down to a dollar 45 where i could buy it back for that profit all right so i want to get in and out of these trades as quickly as possible you guys I'm not trying to play this all the way out and squeeze out every last dime from this. I want to get into this based on this market setup right now, you know, because I've got this big doji like this that's going on kind of in Alibaba, and I think that that's the bearish churn. Um, now, on a loss, do I want to take that max loss in this trade? Well, for me, I was looking at this as uh, in regards to a chart setup, which I really didn't go into much detail on here. But if I'm looking at BABA, you know, this is what I'm talking about. I've got this big candle up here. I've got the big uh, red candle confirmation of a top. You know, I think it's going to roll back down to about this area, right? If I get that rollover by about 30 some odd dollars, uh, I think that I am going to be easily at 50% of my max profit. So that's kind of where I think it's going to go. But the other side of the coin is I'm going to say that in this particular case, because of I'm doing this as a setup around this uh, chart pattern. So if this market trades above, you know, that high of 192 right here, we go above this high of 192, that's where I'm going to look to exit, right? I'm, I'm going to exit. You know, if it if it settles at 193, right? Exit 193. So on the loss for this one, I would say, you know, I'm going to be looking at this above uh sorry, it's 293. I'm gonna say yeah, 293, I'm out. All right. So on this one, I know where my exit is on this, right? The Bob, I'm doing the, the short call spread, short call spread, right? I'm doing the 300, 310, all right? So that's my strategy. Uh, I'm buying the, or sorry, I'm selling the 300 calls and I'm buying three tens uh, for $2.87. All right. And I know on a winner, I'm getting out for 50% of my max profit. On a loser, it trades above that. Now, I, I, I put all these things down on that notebook or maybe in my notes on your uh, trading platform. I still go old school on a, on a notebook so that I can go back and look at it. It also holds you accountable. You know that if it goes and settles above 293, you're out. If you don't write this stuff down, you guys are going to be more than likely to say, all right, well, it settled above 293. I'm going to wait till tomorrow. And what happens tomorrow? It's going to move higher. And now it's basically above 300. And maybe all the shorts are caught on their heels and they blow out of it. And, you know, immediately it's all in your face and your whole strategy went out the window. So write these things down so that you hold yourself accountable. If it's on paper, you know, you committed it to paper, you're kind of committing yourself to that trade. So I like to do that rather than just having it up in your head, because if it's up in your head, you have a tendency to play games with yourself and uh, uh, work that out. So what expiration are you using? So for this strategy, I'm using as close to uh, 35 days to expiration. Did I write that, did I put that down on the uh, duration? That's where I wanted it. The duration, we want to go as close to 35 days to expiration. We aren't always going to have exactly 35 days to expiration. I'm going to lean a little bit towards uh, closer to the expiration because right every day that goes by, theta starts getting more and more aggressive. So I want to lean a little bit more towards closer to expiration. But I will say that this is probably inside of 20 days to expiration, um, you know, those those further, the, the ones that are further out are going to be 
at that point, probably closer to 35 days to expiration. So it's not without going over, it is really a product of closest to 35 days to expiration, right? Inside of 20 days to expiration, these, you know, in another couple of days, these October are going to be the ones that are closer to expiration or closer to that 35 days. Does that make sense, Raj? What expiration are you using? So, you know, it's kind of a pick them right now. I'm gonna to lean towards uh, this one. But once you start getting inside the monthlies, they start getting inside at 20 days to expiration, you know, that 35 days to expiration is probably gonna be the October at this point. Now, somebody else, uh, can we use weeklies? Yes, absolutely. When you're using weeklies, know that there is less volume and open interest. There's less eyeballs on the markets you're trading. So just go back to that rule, moving the decimal place, and just check um, on these October to make sure that they're going to be fitting those rule that rule, okay, um, of the uh, moving the decimal or uh, less than or equal to 10 cents wide, all right? So yes, you can use the weeklies. Uh, I would say the weeklies are probably for somebody that high, has a higher risk tolerance or somebody that's kind of traded options a little bit more and is a little bit more familiar with the pricing of that underlying and stuff like that. If you're newer to options trading, I would kind of stick to the monthlies. Uh, there's just, the reason why I like having free market price discovery going on in full swing is because, you know, there's always somebody in there trying to make a deal happen, right? So, uh, you don't have to give up so much edge to get in and so much edge to get out. If there's only one person making markets, you guys are going to have to go to him in order to uh, facilitate that trade. Uh, what delta is first to strike? Isn't there a uh, uh, three delta rule? Sell around it. Uh, don't buy or other way around. I'm not quite sure what you're trying to say there. Uh, <clears throat> In this one, um, with BABA, uh, I was looking at these 300 deltas uh, because it's closest to that 36 delta. I like to start out with the 36 delta. You know, something, um, you know, the other thing is like the premium kind of determines, if, if I'm looking at this, it's gonna kind of say, hey, you're, you're getting around close to $10. That's also the width of that spread kind of idea. Um, you know, I know it's, and I've got about $10. That's telling me how far away I need to go. You know, like, so for instance, out here, uh, $12, that's still gonna be around that $10, uh, 36 Delta. If I wanted to go out a little bit further, just say I'm going out 20. You know, if you wanted to go out a little bit further, um, maybe get a little bit further away from where the underlying is trading, You'd have to do that one ten dollars wide, so around thirty percent the width. But it gets you ten dollars further away. That makes sense. Uh, delta has some rule. Well, delta tells us the probability of being in the money. Uh, this might be what you're talking about. So, uh, if I'm looking at selling this thirty-six delta or thirty-seven delta in this case, I have a 37% uh, probability of being out of the money at expiration, all right? Uh, inside, uh, that means I have a 63% probability of being out of the money, which is pretty good probabilities. Delta also tells us two times the delta means that's my probability of being touched, meaning in the next 22 days, I have uh, better than, I have about a 64% probability the underlying is gonna come up here and trade 30, all right? That's a floor trader hack. Two times the delta is the probability the underlying comes up and hits this, okay? Um, and and pulls away, you know? So you, that helps keep your mind straight, right? Well, when we're entering this strategy, there's a 37% probability of being in the money at expiration, so on September 18th, there's only a 37% probability Baba will be in the money by one penny or will be $300 and one cent at expiration. But, you know, in the next 22 days, 
there is a 64% probability that Baba will trade up to $300 and one cent. Okay. So two times the Delta means the probability of being kissed or going slightly into money for at least that duration. But no, at the end of the day, our probabilities are our probabilities. Um, sell above, but below or revert a guideline third. Oh, one third width of the premiums. Yes. You account for implied volatility. Implied volatility over here is 54. Well, yes, I. I take into account where current implied volatility is in relation to where it's been in the past. So we need to know, yes, relative to where it's been in the past. So it needs to be above 50 IV percent, which is that um, that rule. Current uh, current IV minus the low high IV, or divide that current IV minus the low IV, take that sum, divide it by the high minus the low, where that is in relation to where it's been in the past. This in the regards to this, right now at 53, that is in the 60 percentile, okay? Does that make sense? So that's kind of where, hopefully it's gonna right, put up all my writing. Because uh, the writing didn't, Came up at the very end, there it is. So these are those guidelines I was talking about, bearish, destination, environment, duration, uh, strikes. Uh, above a 30 delta cell, um, not necessarily always. Um, that's usually where I kind of line up with it. Um, I, I don't like to sell any closer than like a 36 Delta necessarily. So I'm trying to play those probabilities to get a little bit more in my favor than like a 50, 50 probability. Okay. Uh, put spread for bullish call spread for bearish. Absolutely. Yes. For a credit, always for a credit, yes. Good job. You're on it, man. You got it, guys. All right, so this is the offer, you guys. I'm throwing this over the chat box right now, sending that out to you. There's a hot link over there. You know, we, you guys might be thinking, hey, we're kind of past earnings right now. Well, there's still a lot of earnings out there, to be quite honest, that we can take advantage of earnings specific trades. But I also talk about in this uh, course, how to set up for the next earning cycle, how we can take advantage of that longer term, uh, uh, that next bout you know, of earnings and how we think that things are gonna shake out there. There's option strategies for setting up for the next earning cycle. So take advantage of this by clicking on that hot link. If you are watching this on tape delay, you're gonna have to um, pause this video and punch that into your URL. Uh, options course forward slash earnings with options uh, to take advantage of it. Uh, 36 bucks. If you guys are watching TV to get your trade recommendations and your option strategies, I can tell you that that is not the thing you want to necessarily be doing. So I flipped straight to the disclaimer. Uh, but please take a moment to go over this disclaimer while we're there. I might as well. Um, uh, the hot link is in the chat window, you'd have to go back and pause for the other uh, link here. This is also a link for that same earnings course. Thank you guys all for participating in this. Later webinars, I'll drill down on different option components, when and where I'll find those. Also, uh, give us a call at 310-598-6677 or email us at trading at protraderstrategies.com if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future webinars. We'd love to hear those as well. Um, but like I said, if you are watching TV and you're t seeing somebody tell you to go out and buy a call ahead of an options uh, or ahead of an earnings, you are really um, setting yourself up for a disaster, to be honest. And that's what a lot of these guys on mainstream media are saying. And that has to do with the fact that the uh, 
the governing bodies are not allowing them to give different types of trade recommendations that are probably more appropriate, right? They have to put a blanket out there for everybody that don't understand options. Um, I will drill into the details uh, of, uh, of these option strategies, when, where, and why you should be doing it this way. And I think that I come up with a pretty good case, just like in this webinar, I think I came up with a pretty good case for you guys, why we would want to be selling an options or an, a call spread uh, given my directional assumption. Now, I'm not trying to give you guys a directional assumption and Bob, I might very well be wrong in my assumption, right? I'm just trying to say, hey, we've got a bearish assumption in this lip underlying. I'm worried about the upside in it. Uh, it has high implied volatility. Well, when it has high implied volatility, it's got high premiums. I want to take advantage of selling high premiums and I want to take advantage of theta decay. Well, what does that do? That brings us into nearer duration options, selling premiums. What strike location? Well, I want to start out with that 36 delta. Why? Because my probabilities of being in the money at expiration are very low. Also, it gives me a good um, risk versus reward on the spread that I'm doing, all right? I'm risking, uh, I'm risking two to make one, but my problem, you might be saying, hey, my risk reward isn't very good, Wolfman. Well, yeah, but my probabilities of being in the money are very small. So yes, I have, anytime your probabilities of something happening are very small, you have to give up something in return, right? It's kind of like the yin and the yang, right? Well, in this case, I have very small probabilities of being in, in the money, so I have to risk, have more risk on the table versus my reward, which is at $2. In 87 cents or something. All right. So uh, those are all the reasons why we come and build this out. Yeah. I think that, you know, you can go online, obviously, and figure out how to do a short call spread and won't take you an hour of, of worth of webinar to figure that out. But there's more to it, you see. I mean, that's why people on TV don't always know why, know the devil of the details, okay, to be quite honest. Um, they don't always say the right things. So for $36, uh, yeah, that TV uh, education is free, but it will probably cost you a heck of a lot more dollar, a heck of a lot more than $36 on one given trade that they uh, were wrong about the strategy. All right, so without further ado, that's all I got for you guys. I thank you for the kind words. I see some of that stuff pulling up there. Uh, is this just education or do you give trade alerts? Raj, I don't give trade alerts. One thing though I do do uh, is I talk about every one of my trades. Uh, um, you know, you guys can look at my performance on all of that stuff. I'm not afraid to say what trades I put on when I take a win, lose, or draw. I talk about the winners, the losers, and the ones I scratch on. I'm not going to cherry pick like some people will say, you could have had 385% you know, on this trade, had you, you know, listen to me. Well, they're also not talking about all the trades that they gave that were crummy, right? Um, they're only taught, they're cherry picking. And I don't cherry pick. I talk about every single trade I do, when, where, and why I put those on. And when they're losers, I, I talk about them uh, just as much as I talk about the winners. So it's up to you guys to make your own trades. Uh, you can follow along with me and um, uh, I don't have a problem, but just know I am educating and know your risks. Make sure you read over this disclaimer. Um, we all have to be big boys and girls. I want to teach you guys all how to swim. I'm not here to swim for you. How's that? Uh, but you're, you're more than welcome to follow my daily market commentaries and uh, um, implement that into your portfolio in your own way. Does that make sense? <laughs> exactly, Raj. Uh, I, I'm not giving. I, I, I can't, it, it, I, I don't believe in it. I don't know what uh, people out there's risk parameters are. I don't know how much options trading or trading in general you've had. I don't, I don't know what underlines in your portfolio. So if you love Tesla, you guys, you know, and I, I, I don't like Tesla, I would hate to have you guys following my beliefs in a specific underline. You are, a very fine teacher, Wolfman. Thank you. I appreciate that kind words. Thanks.
Uh, yeah, you know, listen, you, look, follow my daily market commentaries. I mean, if you want some trade recommendations, I, I can tell you what I'm coming up with for me. Um, but it's kind of up to you to, to look at what I'm throwing out there and, and, you know, think for yourself. I really want everybody to think for themselves. You know, I mean, I, I want everybody to be their own trader. I feel like if you're, I guess if you want to be the limiting or part of the herd, um, maybe I'm not the right guy for you, but uh, I think that I, I can teach you a lot and uh, I can teach you guys how to really make well-informed decisions on your own. Perfect. Great. All right. Thank you guys all. Like I said, take a moment to go over the disclaimer. That's all I got for you. And if you can't take that, take it easy.